Selfishly, I informed Sam that there was no way in hell he was going to make this highly anticipated epic movie without letting me play some kind of meaningless part. For the film, Sam threw me the role of ring announcer, and I was off to my fitting on the Sony lot. My part was a little Las Vegasy, a little over the top in both look and delivery. The wardrobe department gave me a flashy, heavily shoulder-padded gold jacket and put my look over the top with a Cadillac logo dangling on a chain around my neck. Scenes in big movies like this aren't really rehearsed. They're storyboarded. And on any given day, the workload is judged more by shots than page count. The sequences involving my character all take place in an amateur wrestling ring. Between 1,200 extras, stunts, and choreography, there were a lot of moving parts. In the van, on the way to the set for my first day of work, I glanced inside an open soundstage and saw none other than Sam's self-proclaimed classic, attended by several serious-looking men in mechanic overalls. That's Sam's car, isn't it? I asked knowingly. Earl, the driver, looked back at me nervously. Uh, why do you ask? I then realized that Earl, a loyal teamster, wasn't going to spill the beans. For all I knew, Sam had issued a gag order about his beloved Delta now playing the role of Uncle Ben's car. Oh, that's okay, Earl, I reassured him. Just curious. Earl dropped me at the corner of stages 32, 33, and 35. The back lot was a beehive of activity, really looking like it did in the movies, with all kinds of crew members driving, pushing, or pulling some ridiculously cumbersome piece of equipment in every direction. The only things missing to complete the cliché were a couple of Roman soldiers casually walking by smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee. I collared the first person with a walkie-talkie who approached our van. Uh, excuse me, which one is the Spider-Man stage? I asked, oblivious to the actual scope of the production. The assistant director smiled at me. Uh, Spider-Man is on ten stages. You're the ring guy, right? Yep, that's me. I think you're in 33. Let me check. She barked into her headset and waited for the information to be passed along and up the ranks until she got a reliable answer. It took some doing. Productions like this are pretty much a military operation, very segmented and individually goal-oriented, with a sometime Byzantine chain of command. Yep, you're in 33. Head over there. Someone will meet you. Inside stage 33, which was ancient and enormous, the place was already loud and warm from 1,200 wrestling fan extras shuffling and chit-chatting. Bullhorn-wielding assistant directors were shouting orders and reminders to the anxious crowd. Across the large ring set, I could see Sam behind a bank of video monitors. He looked really busy, and our handlers on set didn't want us wandering around, randomly bugging the director, even if he was an old pal. Sam started the wrestling sequence by filming the wider, more establishing shots first. After a week of this, finding out whether I was even in a given shot became something of a game. Sam had five cameras among the throngs in the arena, so it was anybody's guess. When in doubt, keep acting, I figured. Eventually, I caught Sam during a break. He looked tired but excited. I asked him what it was like to take filmmaking up to the next level, to the A-list. Sam smiled and shrugged. I'm doing the same stuff we did in the Super 8 movie days. I just have a lot more money to play with. Whatever Sam did, it worked. Spider-Man opened to a record $112 million. It's not as big as the oversized mega openings of today, but it smashed a box office record or two at the time. 